Hello and Namaste. Welcome to yet another episode of News Breaking News. I'm your humble host, the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo. Let's get started. So, I used to segment, I used to title uh, bonus segments like part two because I was carrying on with thoughts uh, that I didn't get to in the first 45 minute segment. Then I realized that was kind of messing with my head because it fucks with the episode count. Not that it matters, but it's a little bit of confusion in my mind that I'm trying to alleviate. Uh, Regardless, there were too many items on the plate today. Uh, And I didn't want, they were already kind of getting backed up and I didn't want them to backlog up more because it seems like every 48 hours we get a whole new clusterfuck of breaking news, real and fake and otherwise. So I wanted to clear some of these things out. I'm going to open with this one because it's sort of the realest news and one of the more serious news items that tragically I honestly think is being underserviced today because it's kind of important and urgent in a sort of it might blow your own face off right away without you realizing it kind of a thing. Um, Recently, and for a a disturbing uh, sort of second round of announcement, uh, the company Takata the brand of vehicular airbags has extended, they have extended their recall on faulty airbags. Okay, this sounds really sort of wah wah next to all this international, national uh, government news and stuff that I usually focus on. But, and I know this number isn't huge, but this, uh, this recall, the lack of getting it fixed has already caused 17 deaths. That's 17 otherwise presumably innocent people. And I only say that because everybody's equally guilty and and innocent, you know, so just being funny in my head. Um, But 17 people who probably didn't need to die right then that day um, had their face blown off because of a safety device designed to protect them in a moment of bodily harm and danger uh, malfunctioned and killed them instead. And... To the best of my understanding, multiple hundreds of millions of cars from multiple brands are affected and are on the recall list. So my dear uh, listeners, if you have a car and that car has a airbag in it, you should go to the interwebs and ask it if Takata brand airbags has recalled your make and model because you want to get that fixed and they're trying to get it all fixed. I told, when I wrote this note down for uh, 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 an episode, to, to be used in an episode, I totally meant to look up and have ready for you the link to where you can double check if your car is on the recall list. I don't have it. I totally forgot to do that. But Takata, T-A-K-A-T-A, Takata Airbags. Type in Takata Airbags Recall and the make model of your car, and I'm sure some sort of searchy thing is going to come up that's going to let you search and find that out. Um, But as silly as that is, folks, um, please don't die from having just ignored that recall. Get it fixed. Get it fixed, please. Okay. Enough of that. I think that's real news. Like, real, real news that really needs um, to be shared. So if nothing else, if you know people who drive cars and have airbags in them, share this episode. Just for that bit. And of course, you know, then they can listen to the rest of the show and maybe get seduced into becoming fans. Okay, back to some some news breaking news from from the shining city on the hill we know as Washington. The presidential uh, the 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 press secretary. Sorry, sometimes I can't read my own handwriting. Um, the what is this junior deputy press secretary or something? I forget what her title is exactly. But Sarah Huckabee Sanders, uh, for two or three days running now, has had the humiliating job of presenting an off-camera, audio-only White House press corps briefing 
that patently and unavoidably makes her sound like a political stooge spinning doctored spin for money. Like, it's just sad. And uh, for her sake, I hope that those of you who care and believe in prayer, pray a little prayer for her that um, she wakes up and realizes what she's doing and gets the fuck out of there. Because as it seems to be the case, you know, more and more people who stayed on with this administration are kind of throwing up their hands and going, nope, nope, can't do this job and walking away. Uh, most notably, uh, just in the last week or so, uh, this the chair of the, oh, what's it called? Some kind of oversight committee on ethics, I believe. The ethics oversight committee. I think that guy went, oh, ethics, fuck that noise. I'm leaving. Um, to, I think it was today's, uh, I digress now, today's off-camera statement um, from from the dear Sarah Huckabee Sanders, basically, to paraphrase, um, she was trying to say that that all of this Russia fake news stuff is such a bummer because the president would like to be focusing on, on his agenda, that, it would, that the president would really rather be talking about health care, tax reform, infrastructure, uh, and national security. And, honey, really? He is the president of the United States. At any point in time, you can get up, walk down the hall, step into that breast briefing room, and make a statement. Never mind the fact that he tweets like crazy all day long. So why am I perplexed by your statement? The president would really rather to be focusing on these issues. And why isn't he? Why hasn't he had a press conference since January? Why hasn't he had a real uh, full court press, ask me questions, I will answer them from the podium of the White House press corps briefing room at all? Every other president in postmodern history has if he would rather be talking about these important issues, why is he instead sending you and ever uh, increasingly more rarely uh, Sean Spicer into that press briefing room to say such ridiculous things as this off camera? Why? Because he isn't doing this, folks. He would really rather be talking about blah, blah, blah. He's not doing it, except for at press, uh, at giant, not press, at giant, uh, at the rare times that he does make an address or on the very, you know, softball uh, uh, interviews that he gives to Fox News spectrum, side of the spectrum of, of, of news agencies. And even there, I haven't heard much of substance, any meat on the bones about these issues, or else I'd be talking about them. And I'm, a, I'm just a rank amateur. And I'm pretty sure, uh, while, yes, the left-wing hyper-liberal news is out to destroy Donald Trump, um, <laughs> I think that if he had mentioned these subjects, these topics, and talked in any, about any substance of these on these issues, they'd be reporting it too. Okay? So wowzers, uh, and watch, watch out, folks. I guarantee you. And I think I called this on an, a previous episode from right before they started doing this, like really creepy, really totalitarian, almost you know North Korea esque uh, banning of video cameras in the White House press briefing room. Um, but they're fucking with you. They're fucking with you. You're being played, media. You know the president is not. None of this is by accident. Anyway. In other news, I found this particular interesting item really quite noteworthy because this is a whole new kettle of worms or bucket of worms or whatever. It's a whole new ball of wax. 
Republican senator. I do believe is a senator, not a whatever you call the other house, the House uh, Congressman Mo Brook. He is bringing a budget on the a, a budget battle to the president's doorstep in the coming days and or weeks because he's literally out there stomping uh, around shouting build the wall or government shutdown. Yep. If you haven't heard this, this is hilarious. I, I did a full on stop, pause, rewind, what the fuck? Mo Brooks. Um, I think he's like transitioning to go on campaign. I think he's running for the opposite chamber than he's in now. So he's either in Congress and he's going to run for Senate or he's in Senate and he's going to run for Congress. I don't remember now because I saw this like more than 11 hours ago uh, and I didn't write it down. Oh, he's running to replace Jeff Sessions in the Senate. Boom. I did write it down. <laughs> Mo Brooks, Republican. He is throwing down the gauntlet. Start building this wall right now, America, or I'm going to pull a GOP government shutdown. Wait, wait, what have things come to, folks? The GOP is now pulling the same kind of obstructionist action against their own Republican president as they invested so much in doing for the eight years of the of the previous Democratic president in office? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, well, this is the shocker. I did not imagine in the height of the crazy of Republicans spewing hate on Donald Trump before he became the presumptive nominee and then the confirmed nominee, I could not imagine during that entire chaotic clusterfuck of of mixed signals and 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 uh, you know people uh, disavowing him and then standing up and and vouching for him. Never did I imagine that one of their own would threaten him with a government shutdown in the House of Representatives or the Senate or whatever because of his lack of inaction or because of some issue he's failing on. Because isn't that just crazy? Build the wall, or, sh or we're going to shut down the government. That... Uh, I think that's just the craziest thing I've heard from anybody come, come out of anybody's mouth on the, the GOP side of things. He, uh, he's blaming the DNC minority for, quote, and I'm quoting here, Thwarting the will of the majority. Unquote. Am I not mistaken? Or is that not the job, according to the Constitution, of the minority party in our really ridiculous, supposedly checked and balanced two party system? That the minority party acts as a check to the runaway crazy greed for power of the majority party question mark question mark exclamation point question mark exclamation point question mark and did not correct me if i'm wrong mr mo brooks senator and or congressman for the republican party did or did not your entire uh cadre of the gop your your entire uh, Institutional, you know, your what are they? What's the word? Um, compatriots? No, colleagues. Didn't every single one of your colleagues in the GOP just spend eight years thwarting the will of the majority party? I ask that not because I think Mo Brooks is going to pick up the gauntlet and call into my show. I doubt it. I haven't set up my phone line yet. Um, but because uh, I think it's worth asking so that anyone and everyone who might come across this humble podcast can take a moment and chew on that fact. Because I posit to you, my dear listeners, 
that this sort of behavior that Mo Brook, quote unquote, representative of the people, this behavior he is exhibiting is a prime example of how they themselves, our, our, our elected officials in office, are A, puppets of being manipulated by some other source of influence beyond that of our own voices, which, which they are supposed to be representing. And that, uh, and that the whole point of politics is to cause division, distraction, and dissent, like just constantly be causing turmoil. Because that's what this guy just did. And that's what everybody seems to be doing. Um, and it's quite ridiculous. And and by the way, there's people out there who think the wall is actually already under construction. <laughs> that is all kinds of nonsense. That's all kinds of weird, misleading spin. Uh, we have to remind our brothers and sisters who are still hardcore blind faith believers. We have to point to them to the facts and, and verify it for them that Trump will pretend, and by that I mean he will take the credit for something else happening because it happened because other people did shit and pretend that it was that it occurred because he caused it to be so the basic example is the carrier deal remember the carrier deal it was like the big deal and by that i mean you know how he's always talking about he's the art of the deal master it was the first big corporate deal that uh, back then candidate trump or president-elect trump because it sort of crossed the boundary there, all his use of that. He dropped it as soon as he was in office. But he totally misled his fan base into inaccurately believing that he had shaped the decision there. And he had not. He may have taken a meeting with people at Carrier, but the Carrier deal was something that was well underway. And on top of it, the carrier deal, as agreed and executed, did not achieve any of the false pandering promises that he laid out because people still lost their jobs and that factory in Mexico still got built. Double check it for yourself. Or if it isn't built, built, past tense, it is still on pipeline for being built. Okay? And carrier was going to do what they did, which was not what Trump pretended to take credit for, whether or not Trump is president, period. So, let's keep an eye on this one. Let's put a pin on Mo Brooks and his government shutdown, his eminent government shutdown. Oh, and speaking of deal maker, the uh, ultimate deal maker, did I already talk about? I think I did this in a previous episode of News Breaking News, but holy schmoly, did Putin Trump Trump? Just days before they met, quote-unquote, supposedly for the first time, well, I guess I should have put supposedly before the quotes. Yeah, supposedly, quote-unquote, for the first time. Um, on the same day that North Korea launched that ICBM test thing that increasingly we keep getting lots of weird new updates about whether or not it was able to go this far or that far, whether or not it survived reentry or not, and what I find fascinating about the ICBM test by itself, interesting sidebar, is no one's talking about um, the sourcing on all of those military-grade supplies that went into making it, other than to attribute it all to China, which may or may not be 100% true. Um, but, you know, let's not forget, China, that they couldn't build those weapons without some weapons manufacturer somewhere helping them or providing them materials or giving them instruction or they themselves having a weapons manufacturer it's not a known thing right now but i'm getting a hint of intuitive spidey sense tingles that i, I would not be surprised if someday after some north korea chaos on un unearths a lot of secrets about how they run their country that we find out i wouldn't be surprised if we found out that it, that foreign corporate interests somehow invested in, owned, controlled, and or operated 
some amount of the weapons manufacturing facilities in North Korea. That's a thing to look into. And also, let's, you know, he, so Putin trumps Trump by striking a deal with North Korea, bypassing China, which was Trump's whole big, fun, incredibly smart, savvy strategy, talking directly uh, to North Korea and signing a deal that's, that bars the United States and South Korea and Japan from continuing to conduct their uh, uh, military exercises and show of force in, in, in the area of the Sea of Japan, et cetera, et cetera. And I find that fascinating. And so even if you set aside, let's pretend there was no issue, there was no investigation into Russia meddling, right? Let's set that aside, but everything else remained the same. And this news broke that Putin made a deal with North Korea and Putin, uh, you know, with all these facets that I just laid out and that, um, and that Trump had been approaching the North Korea problem with this whole deal, this grandiose blustering that he was going to strike a deal with China to put this kind of leverage on North Korea. Um, how on earth is it then that it makes any sense that the first public record of Trump speaking to Putin on camera, the first thing he says is, it's an honor to be with you. Even if we assume that this whole scandal of Russia intervention never surfaced and never came out, wouldn't it make sense that Trump, as president of the United States, with all this bluster talk about a deal with China, in regards to the number one existential threat to American safety, a nuclearized North Korea, that he would have slightly different words for the foreign power behind, you know, that, that just trumped him on getting a deal done? Because they got a deal done. And and I'm not entirely clear, um, but apparently North Korea is going to agree to a ban on more tests. Now, I'm not sure if that's nuclear tests, um, or, or just ICBM tests, missile rocket launching tests, but they are going to agree to some kind of ban because this deal imposes a ban on Japanese, South Korea, American joint military exercises and shows its strength. How on earth does this blowhard, this manly man, this tough guy, this no one can fix it but me, deal maker of deal makers, A, blunder the deal making that badly, and then act like such a little meek, submissive, subservient beta male to the guy that trumped him. When his whole brand is being himself the trump card. His whole brand is, I'm manlier, my handshake is tougher, I can outmaneuver, I can outnegotiate anybody. That's his whole image. Sorry for the mocking tone. I don't really need to spew hate at him. I'm just asking a serious question. How is it conceivable? And, by extension, where is the outrage from the deep Trumptopia blind faith voter block? Your man went over there with his leg between his tails, piddled some little please love me pee, and rolled over on his back, exposing his soft little underbelly, begged for a belly rub from Putin. Just days after this much, much heralded, uh, sought after, put North Korea under control, you know, groundbreaking deal gets struck between Putin and North Korea that should have pissed him off. This deal, this Putin deal with, with um, oh gosh darn it, my brain is totally blanking, not on the North Korean leader's name, but how to pronounce it. God bless it. Um, and no folks, I haven't had my 420 bowl today yet. Uh, Way behind the schedule, but stay tuned because there will be a uh, an episode of Cannabis Talk 
later today. Sorry for the random plug there. But uh, honestly, I, I, this is one of those, one of my favorite questions to bring up is where is the outrage? Because for eight years, I had to sit through all this outrage, counter outrage between the left and the right about Obama, the birther issue. The, is, he, is he a fascist? Is he a socialist? Is he a Nazi issue? Outrage beyond outrage from the right wing over the dumbest things and over all kinds of the wrong things, i.e. most of the outrage was kind of obviously just barely under the surface totally about his color. Not calling everybody on the extreme right racist, but fuck, man. Y'all didn't look like you weren't racist. Okay? Um, and now this. Let me put it in perspective for anybody who's listening from the right and doesn't get why we're supposed to hate Trump. I mean, why we're supposed to hate Putin. And I'm not blindly a Putin hater, okay? But if you're from the right and you you still cling or pretend to say or admit uh, or self-identify as someone who holds Ronald Reagan as a personal hero, as the, you know, the G- the modern day Jesus of um, the Republican Party that is heralded and promised and prophesized to someday come back as some people tend to treat Reagan. If you're a Reagan head, if you're a, if you're a Bible-thumping, God-fearing, right-winging, Reagan-loving Republican that loves Donald Trump, where is your outrage? Because let me tell you something. Ronald Reagan was no supporter or fan of the communists or of the Soviet Union or of the Russian Empire that, that rose out of the rubble of the Soviet Union. He held them in check as our um, as America's uh, closest I don't want to say enemy um, because you know the whole Cold War was about trying to stand down from military conflict with each other but they were they never you know Reagan would never have said uh Putin's a good guy. I respect him. I look up to him. He's such a tough leader. You know, he, Reagan would never. If Reagan were alive today, he'd be going, Donald Trump, what the hell are you doing? Oh, shit. I used to have a good Reagan voice, and I don't anymore. I have to practice that. Wah, wah. That sad moment when you realize that you really got to practice your theater acting special, you know, uh, voice impressions, or else they go away. So, yeah, folks, uh, keep asking that question. Where's the outrage on this? Putin North Korea deal and why isn't it all over Fox News mm, gee I wonder so yeah there's that I already went that's twice now that I ranted about it I, I suppose that one's going in the in the filing cabinet boom all right I got 16 minutes left <clears throat> I'll take a second to say uh, hello to and give a, lots of shout out and much love to France, the country of. They are having one of those beautiful uh, national statist pro revolution, gotta fight for your rights sort of days. Happy Bastille Day, France. Um, the French national holiday commemorating the storming of the Bastille, which is sort of like a, well, a military stronghold. On the 14th of July in 1789. Uh, a really important point in the French Revolution, as well as what they called the Fete de la Fédération, which celebrated the unity of French people, the unity of the French people. Bastille Day, as described by Wikipedia. Uh, I have a thing or two to say about Bloody Revolution. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again, my friends. And... It's funny because, you know, France isn't there yet, but if you look carefully, they're not very far from where the United States is. They're slowly kind of two steps forward, one step back, creeping towards an alt-right, hyper-nationalist, hyper-statism sort of movement over there. And, correct me if I'm wrong, that's the kind of thing 
that's the kind of movement that once established and in power gets to become, gets just really easily slides into tyranny and therefore ends up prompting bloody revolutions. Uh, and that, like, you know, revolutions only set up the next generation of oppressors, folks. And I pray that we don't have to live through the, um, oh, we already are, actually. Let's no denying it. There isn't a, a true free democracy in the world today. There's, um, you know, regimes, corporate, international corporate profiteering regimes masquerading as some variation of some form of democratic blah, 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 blah. But freedom? Do we have freedom? What is freedom? Um, that may be a question for another episode. At least in terms of going at it in depth. In other news, uh, quite similarly, just the other day, just days ago, the city of Mosul in Iraq was declared liberated by the coalition, the international coalition of good guys fighting against the bad guys in Iraq. How many years now? How many years have we been shooting at each other and dropping bombs on each other in this country? Is there anything left? Iraq, Syria, Yemen. These places look like dust and rubble. And yeah, I don't know how they, where they had them all squirreled away. Uh, I saw some footage of people celebrating the liberation of Mosul. And they had bright, clean, crisp Iraqi flags. Don't know where they got them. Don't know how they kept them that bright clean and crisp, or if the Iraqi government flew a shipment and you know, airdropped them just in time for the cameras or something. <coughs> but huzzah, if that is some illusionary step towards safety and freedom, then I guess we should welcome it and applaud it. But I bring it up because uh, like celebrating Bastille Day, uh, celebrating the liberation of Mosul and Iraq, we really should question the deeper, darker, murkier things, the facts, you know, of how many died and how many profiteered before we get too caught up in the, you know, self-aggrandizing patriotism of celebrating, you know, having been the guys wearing the white hats, shooting all the guys wearing the black hats. Not to disparage anybody who is uplifted or believed by this announcement. Um, any, any announcement or any action that, that does genuinely lead to the end of armed conflict, I am always grateful for, even if there's a cynical angle on it. So there's that news bit. In domestic news, ooh, let's, uh, oh wait, wait, let's, let's take, sorry, not domestic, in financial news staying out in the international realm, but then sort of swooping into the national realm. Let's see, I got 11 minutes left in this segment. Let's see if I can clear these items out so that the next 48 hour uh, period can be all new segment, all new material for, our, for the next segment. Um, Christine Lagrad, Lagrad of the IMF, the International Monetary Fund or Federation or something, uh, was on the news. I don't have a great quote. So I didn't have time to write it down, and I was already on a kind of don't have time to be doing this, but it's on right now, and I want to catch it and jot some things down. My question might walk away from her segment that I saw, and forgive me, I don't have a reference to which channel and what host. Uh, but she was on there, and I'm sure if you look her name up, most recent interview on TV, you'll find it. My question, my takeaway was, was that fear-mongering? Was that really polite, really genteel fear-mongering? Because every word that came out of her mouth was an overt or subtle, but generally kind of explicit warning uh, 
saying that you know a new financial crisis was likely to happen when you least expect it. I might run out the time on this one because I've got a few choice words for anybody and everybody in the financial industries talking about fiduciary emergencies magically manifesting uh, fuck you economy is imaginary it's entirely controlled and derived by human will and um, these ups and downs these crashes these uh, these market crashes and these and these market bailouts are by design bankrupting America systematically is being done by design. So to sit there and warn us to brace ourselves because you never know when the next financial crisis might happen, go fuck yourself. Those of us who can see clearly how economics works understand and are not fooled by your tricks. The community of financial profiteers who profit on the system of economics, they have their hands on all the levers of economics. Because it is not a law of nature. Economics is not a phenomena that occurs organically in the cosmos. It is a lie. And a lie doesn't necessarily have to be an evil thing, quote unquote. Okay? A lie is simply an idea that does not reflect reality accurately or does not represent something that is real in reality. Economics is something we, as a species, made up, something that we imposed on ourselves something we brainwashed ourselves into projecting our belief energies into, and that we ourselves as humans control every nuance aspect of. Inflation does not occur in nature. Deflation of value does not occur in nature. Now, you can maybe hyperbolically exaggerate some circumstances in nature to kind of personify them and make them seem as though, but no. You know how I know? Because the cosmos doesn't give a fuck about any ideology or uh, you know, conceptual construct that is about material gain. The cosmos neither gives a shit about economy, does not give a shit about inflation, it does not acknowledge its existence, and it does not require it for any of its purposes. The only people involved in any of those things I just said are those that profiteer on the system itself. I'm sure the International Monetary Fund is not going to be very excited about being mentioned on my podcast that way. In related news, a little bit of gentle sort of uh, anxiety rattling or anxiety mongering, uh, there was plenty of talk on uh, all the channels from both sides of the ideological spectrums, all sides, all corners, uh, about the, uh, the Fed chair, Janet Yellen, and her final visit to Congress because that's what the, the, the chair of the Fed does. They go to Congress and they testify on the regular about the state of American economy and what they think the Federal Reserve ought to do in order to influence the economy vis-a-vis -vis pulling the levers on the completely man-made system of economics. Um, the interesting thing was that... Uh, the it was pointed out very curiously that the if she retires or I don't think 
she's up to for retirement. But if for some reason, um, I think there's like a window here where she might not be kept on. Her term is up because you know this was her final visit to Congress according to the terms of her tenure. But she can she can renew, she can be renewed or asked to stay on for another term, or she can be replaced at this time. And I believe it is up to the president. And apparently, all the buzz is that the next appointee might very well be yet another, because there's been several, yet another Goldman Sachs. Uh, goon. It's become so blatant that the following term is now casually bandied about on almost all news media, despite of which, regardless of which side of the, the divide they're on. Government sacks. What's the latest count on how many Goldman Sachs CEOs and, and executives are appointees or hires, new hires, in this administration? I lost, I stopped counting at seven, right? There's, there was seven at one point. I think they got rid of one or two, but I could be wrong, it might have been six or five. But there were several, more than would seem appropriate given the fact that one of his biggest and most outlandish political promises was that he was going to drain the swamp. The swamp is not drained, folks. The swamp is being overpopulated. Uh, and of course, this whole situation as to whether or not Janet Yellen will leave or come back, it prompts <coughs> thoughtful thinkers to ask some questions like, what the fuck is the Federal Reserve? What the fuck does the Fed do exactly? How the fuck does that work? So we're going to do a whole Federal Reserve special episode because there's a lot of really disturbing information there. Like, did you know that we don't own our own money? Yep, that's a true thing. The United States government does not own its own money. The United States government doesn't print its own money. It leases or rents or borrows the money from the Federal Reserve, which is a private for-profit institution. It just has the word federal in it. That is the entire, like, I just busted the nut on the Federal Reserve episode right there. But for shits and giggles, we're going to make a Federal Reserve episode later on because it's always worth revisiting. There it is. That's my teaser and the closing line from the Federal Reserve episode. Stay tuned for that. Let's keep it over there. Um, so, yeah. One of those phrases that very rarely gets used around the Federal Reserve, central bank. Central bank. You should look that word up internationally. You should look up how many countries have a central bank and how many countries don't. There's a really funny pattern there. But uh, I'm running out of time, so I will leave it at that. And I'll open this, uh, the next news breaking news with this. Oh, I'm so tempted. I got one minute left. Okay. There's a bit of news uh, surrounding Kushner's real estate company. Um, it's in hot water uh, with a really controversial building that it owns. It's most recent acquisition in the New York skyline and something that once again prompts me to ask, where the fuck is the outrage? Kushner owns the notorious and controversial 666 building. All right, I'm going to leave it alone, and we'll reopen another F segment with that because it's too good. This has been another episode of News Breaking News. I'm your host, the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo, and I'm sending you a lot of humble thanks for listening and tuning in. you've got news items you want me to talk about on this segment, shoot them at me. You've got my social media details all over the place. I hope to hear from you soon. Peace out.